This time on Norfolk Perspectives, we're talking about Nauticus transforming spaces all over the place. Heart of Ghent 10K, you're going to want to sign up now because registration's going fast. Traveling arts exhibit and projects in some really special places in Norfolk. And the Honey Bee Festival is coming to the Norfolk Botanical Garden. So stay tuned for some great stuff right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. And yeah, Nauticus is transforming like crazy. If you haven't been there in the last two or three weeks, you got to get there. Stephen Kirkland, director of Nauticus. How you doing? I'm great, Bob. How are you? Pretty good. And I'm glad you brought Joy with you. I rolls, who's the assistant director, but may, she's the money gal, right? She is. Joy's uh, out there knocking on doors and um, and getting the funding for all these cool ideas. I was going to say, because you're really bringing some ideas alive. But before we get into that, I've got to tell you, I went there Sunday. And? 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 And the reason we went there was because we had company from out of town, and they said, we want to go to Nauticus in the Wisconsin. I said, okay, we'll take you over there. We've been there so many times. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's like a brand new place. We spent three hours on the ship. And cool. no, I did not have the special tour. <laughs> it was cool. self-guided. I got lost half the time. Well, good. But then good. we got into Nauticus, and just really kind of subtle changes. Same place. But it really reinforced what I was hearing in the ship. Is that intentional? Yeah, it is. You know, we we um, we want to continue to evolve and continue to reintroduce ourselves to our own community. It's not just about the folks who are coming this summer from all over the country, but but we want uh, something special for. Um, folks like yourself who have guests in town, we're continuing to open up new spaces on the battleship. That's always a, a big thing for us. And it us. doesn't smell. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't smell. We should explain that. <laughs> Joy, would you like to explain that? Well, I'll explain it. <laughs> uh, last summer we did uh, quite a few different construction projects on the battleship, and one of those was to put in an HVAC system that gave you um, air conditioning and took out some of the, the some of the smells. Yeah, so, Virginia Beach has the sound of freedom. of freedom. We have the smell of freedom, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, okay, so that kind of transformation. Yeah, it's not real glitzy, and but it's noticeable. So without the glitz, how do you get people to say, come on board and join us and help pay for these kind of things? Well, um, we begin transforming spaces, if you will, uh, through a, a concept. Steven's brain, for instance, has all these great ideas at different times. <laughs> wow. you, and, and you pick uh, one? And we pick one or two, <laughs> and we decide, let's run with them. And, uh, and so after that, we go into a design phase. And of course, any design phase is also complemented by this uh, fundraising strategy because as many of many know, Nauticus is owned by the city, but what the mm -hmm. city can give to us is not near the amount of money that we need in order to redo and redesign different spaces for Nauticus. And it shouldn't be. It should be a public-private partnership in all of that. So the development staff does its work. We develop a strategy. We ha design sponsorship packages. We um, identify individuals, corporations that can help us become partners in transforming that space. And then he takes it from there, he and the team, and, and, bringing uh, it alive. and brings it alive. Okay, now there's a, I heard, I mean, I've, we're having Virginia Stage Company on to talk about uh, Here We Go Again, yeah. the Christmas Carol, but it's again a different kind of twist. Yeah. Patrick's going to do his magic on it. But then I heard it's leaving the theater, and is this one of his bubbles that came out of Stephen's head? <laughs> That's so scary to think that. <laughs> you know, this is a project that we, we, we love partnering with the stage company, but this is an immersive experience. We wanted to create a new tradition in downtown Norfolk. And so we we've, are creating, as we speak, Dickens Christmas Town. We're transforming the first floor of the Half Moon into this incredible Victorian Christmas village, if you will. Um, we'll have carolers and actors, but we'll have merchants and activities for kids. And um, just sort of a, one of those um, traditions we want to um, make sure that every family in the community is able to come. We priced it accordingly, and it's going to be a lot of fun this year. Now, normally, since this is television, we have pictures galore. A little early yet. <laughs> so what's it look like right now? Uh, I was just in there uh, a couple hours ago. It's uh, We're laying down the streets and the sidewalks, and soon the sets will come up, and you'll start seeing the shapes of buildings um, and doorways into little storefronts, um, and soon that'll get painted, and we'll have the 
ye old Bob Batcher, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have all sorts of fun stuff in there. And, so, and so it'll be interactive, but you use the keyword immersion, because that's kind of what you yeah. get throughout all of the Nautica's experience. That's the goal. That's the goal. We want it uh, to, to do more than just provide exhibits. We want people to come, experience something, maybe take something home. Um, we want them to learn. We want them to think. We want them to sort of get out of their box a little bit and have this sort of immersive, uh, ex just like we're doing with Spy Ship on the ship, uh, just like we've done with uh, Haunted Ship, those kinds of things. Now, and in a lot of these, I mean, they're ideas, they, they get you engaged, but they're not really that expensive. Now, I probably shouldn't say this in front of Joy, but some of them just have been using the creative process. True. Right? No question. I mean, the battleship is a perfect example that you couldn't ask for a better set. Um, you know, so going into the battleship is cool enough on its own. So as, as we sort of develop spy ship, we add lasers and we add some cool bells and whistles. But the truth is the ship is why people come mm -hmm. and, and we get that. Okay. And now you've been, some of the bubbles have come out. I love that. Bubbles, that bubbles have come out of Steve's head. Bubbles. Have been uh, speed boats. <laughs> Yes. So, is there going to be speedboats in the? No speedboats. There were no speedboats in Dickens. No speedboats. Okay, how about the? I mean, we know that you fantasize yourself as 006. <laughs> 004. <laughs> yeah, 004. I was going to give you more credit than that. No 007. And no 007. So you're sticking within the theme of. We're sticking within the theme, and it's a great partnership between us and the stage company. They're they're obviously very talented at what they do, and uh, we're adding a little nauticus to it as well. So. That's cool. So you're having success? We are having success. Uh, we are still seeking sponsorships, I will say that. So if somebody wants um, to be a sponsor or yes, a naming rights or something like that, like the please. ye old pub of? Exactly, you exactly. You hold up a number. Yeah. You have a number? <laughs> <laughs> um, it is 664-1037. Ask for me, Joy G Irols. Give Joy a call. Yes. It's, I got to tell you, the experience Sunday was awesome. I can't Great. wait to come back, and I will become a member. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> when we come back, we'll be talking about the heart of Ghent. And I think I'm going to commit there, too, but find out what I'm going to commit to. Stay tuned. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Well, about a year ago, Pat Moore was on that sofa, or actually on the streets of Collie, two years ago now, to tell me about uh, the heart of Ken, and I had no idea what he was talking about. What's really cool, a year later, or two years later, I know exactly what you're going to talk about. Pat Moore, how you doing? I'm very good, thank the heart you. The Heart of Ghent 10K. Third year. Which is twice as long as a 5K. That's correct. <laughs> and a little more than that than an 8K. I'm learning all this stuff because I'm participating. How does that make you feel? It feels terrific because, you know, we talked about this about three years ago. Um, so you've really been working on me a long time. I have, but... Uh, how much weight have you lost? About 25 pounds. I've 25 pounds. And when was but you? I still have body fat. I understood. Well, last year you walked the race. Yeah. How long did it take you? Um, I almost was picking up the, um, the barricades. That's all right, but you finished. That's right. I, my goal was to finish and not get hurt. And now since then I've raced in other races, which means I have a perspective. And I will tell you, guys, that this is a unique race. It is very unique. So why, why do you make it unique? Well, you know, the Ghent Business Association decided uh, a few years back that we wanted to come up with some kind of event that would bring people to the business and the shopping district and um, spend the day there. Uh, it was also, we wanted to create an event that would be held rain or shine. And what is that? It's a race. People that run and or walk, they run rain or shine. Mm -hmm. So it was a great uh, idea, it was a concept. We had to find um, a race director that would fit within our niche and, and would work with us and listen to our ideas, which was, uh, this is Ann Hupp with Metal Events. Well, I was glad you made, because I was sitting here thinking, you know, people have gotten married, so they know how to plan a wedding. They've been to a party, so they know how to plan a party. You've raced, so you knew how to plan a race. No. Right, Ann? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you race and plan races. So what goes into planning a race? You have to listen to your customer. You have to know your audience. Uh, your audience is your customer. 
secondary customer. Um, you need to have something unique, something fun, something family oriented, and, and something that's so special that the customer, the runner or walker, will pass three other events to come to yours. Because races are becoming <clears throat> very popular, aren't they? It's a hotbed for racing. So what makes this one unique? This one's unique in many ways. Um, first of all, it's Ghent. And being a native, um, it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, you go by some of, the, some of the most wonderful places in Ghent. You're promoting the businesses in Ghent. You're promoting uh, the residents. You're, you're sharing uh, where you were born and raised and where you love to hang out with other people. Mm -hmm. And you're showing them really the best of it. It, the awards are local, the finisher medals are local, the t-shirts are local, the money stays local. Um, it's, it's, really, it's, a, it's a really good feeling event and it's family oriented. It is. I, I will say uh, from a runner's point of view, it's really cruel though what you do toward the end because you kind of know where the, where the finish line is <laughs> and if you turn left it's right there, but oh no, turn right and still meander around. That's because we didn't want to leave you wanting more. Oh, that you, <laughs> no, you did not, especially when this guy it shows up at the end after having run it and actually ran in with me. Nice. Yeah, I, I ran in. Jennifer, you get to promote the thing. I do. So who are you promoting? We're promoting Ghent as a whole, basically. I mean, the race is really a signature event for the Ghent Business Association, a way for us to highlight our, our businesses and the business district and and what Ghent has to offer so the goal is to bring people into the community and let them have a wonderful time and see places that they want to come back and visit whether it's shopping or eating that sort of thing well the party started at the beginning and it was a family friendly party mm -hmm. and then it continued on after and people kind of just lingered it was really kind of a, a cool environment okay um, how many how many participants are you hoping for Pat this year we're shooting for over a thousand and I think we'll do it. There was 187, I think, registered as of last Friday. And we're eight weeks out from the race, and that's phenomenal, uh, one. Two, I would like to mention that all of the charities that are involved are also association members, and that would be um, Access AIDS, EVMS Straylitz uh, Diabetes Center, 4Kids, Ghent Area Ministries, and the Ronald McDonald House. So not only are you going to get healthy by running or, or, and, and, and getting ready for it, but also you're going to participate in local charities that stays right here. Yeah. Okay, Pat, I got a challenge for you. I want you to call me when you get to 750, and then I'll come out with a camera guy, and we'll run the first part of the race. That'd be fine. That sounds great. Does that sound okay? Nice. That sounds terrific. 750, give me a call. We'll, uh, we'll go on location, and we'll run the first part of the race. And I have to mention all of our sponsors are also business association members. We wouldn't be able to do this race without Monarch Bank, without Centera Cardiovascular, uh, not cardiovascular, but uh, Heart Hospital, mm -hmm. uh, Bon Secours Cardiovascular Group, Hot House Yoga came on on uh, and helped this year. One Life Fitness has just done a tremendous job. And I know you have some ideas to expand the platform right. yourself. So when we run live, not live, taped, on location, We'll, do, we'll talk about those enhancements. That sounds great. Thanks a lot for uh, bringing this race to town and keeping it here, too. Thanks so much for Thank having you. us, Bob. Thank you. When we come back, we got some art going around on exhibit. Stay tuned. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to Know for Perspective. Well, when I hear of a traveling exhibit, I think of the art traveling. And in this case, we had some of our artists traveling. And I got two people here to straighten me out on all of that. Shara Wirtz, Recreation Specialist for Recreation Parks and Open Space. You're at Titustown, right? Yes. Visual Arts Center. And Debbie Dickerson, Senior Recreation Supervisor. You're all over the place. Yes, I'm traveling too. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and again, you're running the before and after school program, and there's a tie in there with this traveling art, isn't there? 
there is, and Sherry can tell you all about that. Yeah, because we had artists go around mm -hmm. yes. to the before and after school. Program, um, right? Local artist, and fortunately for us, uh, instructor Bernard Conda goes around to, to various centers throughout the school year, uh, typically about three centers a year, and he introduces an art history lesson, he introduces an artist, and then brings out the canvas and lets the children get to work. Cool. And then there, those exhibits now, those, those pieces of art are being exhibited at the Titustown. Yes, Resources. absolutely. They'll be on view through August. Now, do these kids quite understand why you took their pictures away from them? <laughs> <laughs> I think they understand. And they know that they're going to get those back and they'll be on permanent display. So it's coming in their home. Their center is coming home. Okay, now I, I kind of approached this segment all wrong because when I was thinking of traveling exhibit, and I know that the Titus Town Visual Arts Center for 11 years now, Debbie? Yes. Has been really the kernel of some great visual art creativity thing, right? Certainly. We, we love it there. So let's, great. so I really thought it was all created there, but the... Uh, you know, we expand outward. <laughs> we travel. We get around. Debbie, I want to ask you because uh, I was shocked in pre-tape when we were talking 11 years because it seems like it was just a few years ago that the community was saying, we want our center. Uh, it feels that way too. It's just been a short time, but actually, it's been I think it was decades actually in the in the making. Yeah, it's really a great example of how when the community comes together, they can give what they want, and then some magic has occurred there as we're seeing here. I'm going to ask you who was the artist that did these two? This is Monet, and the children looked at water lilies, his series of paintings, right? Water lilies, and they took it in, absorbed it. And this is what they created, yeah. Now, when you keep saying, okay, Monet is singular, so it was the mind of a single genius. Yes, yes. But you keep saying they created these. Yes. A group of children uh, between the ages typically of 8 and 12. And for these particular pieces, a group of four children worked on this together. Hello. I only had two at a time when I was raising girls, and they could never. How did you pull that off? <laughs> well, Bernard is a fabulous instructor, wonderful, and amazing artist, and he just connects with children brilliantly and brings out an amazing amount of creativity. Well, talk about brilliance. I, I will tell the audience that when we were setting this up, the uh, camera crew was really enamored with Bigfoot here because yeah. they were seeing claymation in form. You won't see it move. Or if you do, it's not our doing. So where did this guy come from? This is a project that was done last summer in another of Bernard's classes that's offered at, over at Visual Arts at Titus Town. Uh, it was called Arting Bigfoot. And he guided the children through drawing and bringing it through throughout into a three-dimensional project. And this is I believe Miss Kaylee Fernandez's rendition of Bigfoot. Well, you're going to have to keep a good eye on it when the segment's <laughs> over with because it may disappear <laughs> among the crew here. Now, obviously, this is an older person that did the, uh, the, the peace sign because it's kind of oh. my generation. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, she was I'm five, wrong again, right? maybe six at the time. <laughs> wow. This is Taylor, um, uh, Taylor Smith. She made that in a clay tiles class that we, we did uh, just last year. As a matter so of it's fact. not just paint and Oh and no! It's no, we have a wide array of mediums that we work in and teach over at the center. Okay, now we were commenting in pre-tape that every pottery thing I brought home looked like an ashtray, but that really is a cool piece in the front. <laughs> Again, somebody of maturity. Oh, of course, yeah, four. Wrong, wrong again. <laughs> now, how did he come up with that kind of... We were doing a hand-building class called Funky Forms, and so we rolled out coils, and I taught the children how to experiment with rolling the coils, scalloping coils, and this was the end piece. You just kind of hit on something, because the thing that amazes me about art is so often I wondered, you know, did they have, like in this case, they had something in mind. Mm -hmm. But in that case, it was really working with form and kind of creating it. So the creative process was kind of open-ended for the for a four-year-old. Absolutely, and you know, it's I think it's a wonderful way to work for both children and adults, exploring the medium on your own, doing your own thing, getting a little advice on, you know, how to roll, how yeah. to pinch, how to pull it all together. But in the end, really allowing people to express themselves. Well, but then when do you know when to quit? <laughs> that's that's what I've. I've been painting for many years, and I'm still asking myself that okay. question. <laughs> now, I'm going to just assume that the mosaics on the end were a more mature person. Yes, they I'm were. I'm finally you right. You hit it. You hit it right on hit the neck. 
These pieces belong to Lee Walton, and he's one of our adult students, one of our young kids that takes classes with us. Uh, this is a class we're featuring mosaics, which is taught by Patricia Eisenhower. And uh, we'll be registering for this particular class for residents in Norfolk as early as August the 18th. Beautiful segue because we've, we're celebrating the work of people who have participated through the, the Rec Visual Art Program, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a continuation because you can take all kinds of classes. Absolutely. And what I discovered is even if you're not four, and you might be a little mm -hmm. older than that, like 64, you can always start at yeah. any time, can't you? Absolutely. And we have classes that range from one and two day workshops to 10 week classes each session. So, so we have something, a little something for everyone. So come on over to the uh, Titus Town Visual Arts Center, check out the great work that's been done before it goes back home, mm -hmm. and sign up for class two. Please do. Good times. Check it out, ah, right? Ah, that's right. Our, our new good times for the fall 2014 is coming up soon, and you can find that online at uh, www.norfolk.gov slash backslash play. Good. Yeah. Good. And you what? What better way to create but to play and to, and to follow the, the guidance of a four-year-old and experiment? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. What your mom and dad said about the birds and bees might just be right. Stay tuned and find out. Start your summer adventure at Norfolk Botanical Garden. Join their quest to save monarch butterflies through Mission Monarch Project Milkweed. Learn why these jewels are in such trouble and what one simple thing you can do to help save them. Be surrounded by hundreds of live butterflies in the butterfly house. Explore the 600-foot monarch flyway. Crawl through a 14-foot caterpillar, transform into a butterfly, and be ready to migrate to Mexico. So put on your wings and let's fly. Now through September 21st at Norfolk Botanical Garden. Sponsored by Capital Group Companies. Welcome back to Nova Perspectives. Well, Kelly Walsh is back, and guess what? She's going to tell us about the birds and bees. Kelly, how you doing? Not really. <laughs> you, got all, <laughs> you got all kinds of cool stuff going on in the garden, and I thought you topped it with monarchs, but now you're talking about pollinators? Well, monarchs are pollinators. They're pollinators they as well, yep. And we're going to talk about um, our fourth annual Virginia Honeybee Festival that's coming up. Mark your calendars um, for Saturday, August 16th. All right. It's the only one in Virginia. So, so lots of honey cool. and some bees, or lots of bees and some honey? Lots, lots of, of bees everything. And lots of honey. Yeah. Lots of everything. Okay, Rick Fisher, you're the Beekeepers Guild of Southeast Virginia. What does a Beekeepers Guild do? Uh, actually, we're an educational nonprofit, and we teach uh, other beekeepers and we teach the public about uh, the importance of honeybees. Okay, now I got to ask you is a bee a bee a bee? No, honeybees. Honeybees are, are a non-native species. They're actually imported into Jamestown oh. by the by the colonists. Uh, but there are about 400 different native bee species that have actually evolved in, in North America. Okay, now what about a wasp? Wasp. Actually, they they broke off this from the is wasp years ago. Stuff, Kelly. This yeah, really is. They're all evolved from a common ancestor, a hypenoptera. But they, the wasp and the bees broke off. Wasp went off to be uh, meat eaters, and the Bees would have to be vegetarians. Okay, so wasps sting, and they're the ones you don't like. They all can sting. Wasps can sting. Bees can sting. There are some native beings, bees who have very small stingers that can't pierce the skin, so they appear not to sting. Piece of cake. So, <laughs> how are we going to go? With I don't that? know where I'm going to go with this. Okay, August 16th. August 16th. What kinds of things do we get in the, at, at the festival? Um, honey extraction, which I think is really cool. That's an interesting process to see. Honey extraction? Yeah. They, they extract from the honeycombs. Oh, Am I saying that okay. right? Yep, yep. Um, and you, you get to see it, and you can taste the honey as well. So that's that's pretty cool. There's lots of food vendors. There's activities for the whole family and chil their children. Um, we have headbands, little antennas that you can get done, and we have a um, honeybee parade. So if they, the kids want to dress in costume, we certainly encourage that um, to come out and learn all about the honeybee. Cool. Now, okay, <clears throat> back to the male-female thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, do they have different jobs? Oh. Yes, the females do all the work in, in the hive. Well, Kelly said that mm -hmm. in pre-tape, but I didn't believe her. <laughs> it is true. true? Th this is the one thing you can believe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought that was just a well, They do all the work? Yes, they do. So what, what's the guy do? Just lay around? Uh, mate with the queen <laughs> outside the hive. And that's it? That's it. And that's his entire life? That is it. Now, so how long does that take? Mm, depends on how successful he is. <laughs> 
Oh, really? Yep. It's all done while flying. Wow. Now, rumor has it, Kelly was also sharing uh -huh. in pre-tape, that if he's successful, he's done. That's unfortunate. He's dead. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's true, too? Yes. See? So you don't see many males around? No. Okay. Now, how long will a female... Okay, you said queen, so the queen, because there's a whole hierarchy about this, right? right? The, the regular worker... I can't worker, believe I'm having this conversation. Yeah, female worker bees can live approximately six weeks in the summertime. They, they literally work themselves to death. Uh, they, they, they'll fly out one day, and their wings will be so tattered they won't be able to fly back. And, and, and in the wintertime, they don't fly as much. Do you find that much. disturbing? Yes. <laughs> and in the wintertime, they don't fly as much, and they, last, they live quite a bit longer. Okay, what's the queen doing through all this? Queen... Mating. No, no. The queen okay. goes out on a couple of mating flights in her, in her, after she emerges, and she'll lay eggs for the rest of her life. And she'll lay 1,000 to 2,000 eggs a day in the height of the summer. Holy moly. Okay. She's very busy. Now, on to the finished product. Okay. Honey. Honey. I mean, honey is, is really the great reward, and it seems to be coming, becoming more popular mm -hmm. with infusion and that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Are you going to be kind of getting into that, too? or? All, all of our honey will be local, uh, unprocessed raw honey. Uh, okay. we, we, don't, we don't process anything. Uh, uh, that uh, seems to be what people come looking for. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's so good too. Really well, good. I mean, this whole hypergenetic, uh, I mean, what's it called? Uh, Hyperallergenic and all that kind of thing. Yeah, that, that if you got local honey. A, a lot of people find it helps with their allergies. Okay. Um, the theory being uh, you're taking in a little bit of the local pollen along with the honey when you're eating it. So it's kind of similar, similar, similar kind to of a flu shot. You know, you got a little bit of what pro the problem it's causing. And it makes you desensitize it to it. Cool, that. but at the same time, it's a natural sweetener. Yes, it is. So now you were yeah. saying that this is the only one in Virginia. Yeah, the only honeybee festival, and it has grown so much since the first year. Um, I know we had well over a couple thousand people last year. It was way more than that. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's and exciting. you weren't and you weren't dealing with butterflies then either. So you got butterflies and bees. Yeah, we got it all <laughs> at the garden. That's so cool. Now, do you have milkweed? We do have milkweed um, throughout the garden for sale. We have a few in the gift shop. Um, so get out there quick. Yeah, and hopefully some of the garden centers. I know you said that you've had a hard time getting milkweed. If, um, come on, you talk about it, and I can't get it anywhere. Wow. Well, we do have a few in the gift shop. I should have brought you a little okay. present, but I so, didn't. So good over to the gift shop, get the last of the milkweed, join as a member. Join as a member. That's the that's the biggest thing right now. Um, best deal in town. Eighty five dollars for six people. So yourself and the rest, you know, and your family um, for the rest of the year. And then you can come, come back on August sixteenth and learn more than you ever wanted to know about bees and get some great honey. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then October something is the Flutter Festival. Yeah, Flutter Fantasy and coming then up. And then lights coming. Yeah, the lights are coming. We're and putting I'm up a new wrap sign. Up. <laughs> We're getting a wrap up. Don't worry, I had so There's much so many more. Other things Mission to talk Monarch. About. Make sure you check out Mission Monarch on our line. website. Go to your website. website. And the bee, the Honey Bee Festival. And if you, if we, if you, we left anything out, go look it up. Right. That's right. About birds and bees. <laughs> we want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood. Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk, just because of you, and you, and you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.